everyone. I hope you are warm during this cold time. I know that it's been difficult to be outside and join with the family and friends, but I know that we can make it through. And with Jesus, Holy Spirit presence and the Lord in our life, I'm sure and I'm very confident that each of us will be able to make it through. Now, um, here I am with a message that I have learned and received, and I want to share with all of you because it's really important for each of us to know and have an understanding of what the Lord is doing, and also to have an understanding the reasons for the things that are happening. Many people may think that this is not from the Lord, that the Lord doesn't work like this. But honestly, I have to tell you guys, yes, Jesus loved us. God loved us. That's the reason that he sent his only son to die for us. And for Jesus to, to live, one of the things that must happen is for the Holy Spirit to live with us. So that's the reason that also Jesus has to live. So keep in mind the, that the fact that the Lord did all of this out of love for all of us. And many things that happened through years and decades that the Lord has permitted and also that the Lord has done is out of love. Love is not what uh, many people think that is the way how Hollywood had made it. No, that's not real love. Love is way more, much more than that. And love is unmeasurable. You cannot measure the quant uh, on quantity, on length, on width. The great love that God has for all of us. And because of that, the Lord permitted destruction the Lord permitted even that the enemy attack us in certain areas from our life for us to have an understanding and learn our lessons well in this case the Lord has shown me a couple of things that I was aware but I have better understanding and also more clear on uh, the reason for all of these things are going on like we're living nowadays so what happened in the past, before Jesus Christ's death, before Jesus Christ being born, way before, it was meant to happen. It was meant to happen because the thing is, humans, us, repeat behaviors. Even though we try to change our way behaviors that we learn through our parents relatives whoever whoever we hang at, uh, around still there are things in our life in our attitude mentality behavior that will come afloat that has nothing to do actually with the people that you surround with it's actually things that are coming through because of generation okay so that's the main reason that the Lord has to work in us by using the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts us and who teaches on how to conduct ourselves how to behave how to speak and through the Holy Spirit is how the Lord teach us that's the reason that for for love he sent Jesus. And Jesus is him, made in man. He sent Jesus to be among all of us to bring the message that we are supposed to practice with each other. And also to have a relationship with him. That's the reason that the Lord came on earth. Unfortunately, the main people that were supposed to accept him were the main people that rejected him. And those were the main people who crucified him. And for the Holy Spirit to come into our present today, to be in us, to be here among all of us, 
Jesus was needed to die on the cross. You, you know, this is so beautiful in a way. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's beautiful that Jesus has to die. What I'm saying is that the sacrifice that God has to do out of love for all of us to understand the real reason that He loves us. He has to send Jesus to bring the message, even though we already have prophets in the past speaking His message. Still, the people will stumble them will kill them will reject them he has to bring his begotten son he loved his son and he was his only son so still Jesus died on the cross because of the same people from the past who was rejecting the prophets uh, were the same people who rejected him during the time that he walked here on earth And the best part of all of this is that even though Jesus died and he was here before dying, giving the message, instructing people on doing things how we're supposed to do, helping this one, speaking the truth, doing this and that for others, still there were also Satan, Satan's people, I'll call it the puppets. Um attacking him but attacking him you know and he wasn't immune on to none of that but you know Jesus has a pretty, pretty way to handle those people too so what I'm trying to say with all of this is that Jesus died not in vain because of that sacrifice that's the reason that we have the Holy Spirit nowadays with us And yes, even though Jesus died many, 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 many years ago, and the Holy Spirit has been around around us for so long, still there are many people, uh, in globally speaking, that are doing things that are not satisfying, are not good in the sight of the Lord. And the, one of the main things that people are doing is idolatry. We all know that we're not supposed to have idols. The, if we're going to be idolizing someone, will be God. And God explicitly says in the one of the Ten Commandments, we cannot have any other God than Him but God. He's the only God, and that's true. Because honestly, having all idols to idolize them, bring destruction in our life just think about that one of the things that idols do unto people is committing sexual immoralities that even the sexual immorality can become an idol so that's the reason that we have to cut it up short completely right away because in God's sight it doesn't look good Well, let me tell you that on here on Zechariah 13, the Lord shows me and he said it. He told Zechariah because he even showed him through this vision of many things that are going to be happening. Which, are, by the way, are already happening. and But people are still like asleep. I don't know why. But yeah, I understand some others are blind in the spirit and that's something that I, I don't want to get into right now but it was meant to happen anyway in in here the Lord says that in that day which is the day of the destruction a fountain shall be open for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem and this is all because of sin and for uncleanness it shall be in that day says the Lord that I will cut off the names of the idols from the land and they shall be no longer be remembered i will also cast the prophets and the unclean spirits to depart depart from the land it shall come to pass that if anyone still prophesies then his father and mother who begot him will say to him 
you shall not live. Because you have spoken lies in the name of the Lord. His father and mother who begat him shall trust him through when he prophesies. But he will say, I'm no prophet. I am a farmer for a man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And one will say to him, what are these wounds between your arms? Then he will answer, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friend. You see, so even in the same day, the Lord will be breaking away all the names of those idols. Because we're not supposed to be uh, um, worshiping any idols. We're not supposed to be having any other gods but Him. And He's going to be doing this from the entire world. The entire land will be the entire whole world globally. This is going to happen when He opened the fountain. For the house of David, even for the people of Jerusalem. And all because of sin and uncleanness. Think about that. What is uncleanness? And that's why I just explained uh, not too long ago. Uncleanness also is uh, sexual immorality. Uncleanness is lies. Uncleanness is killing. Uncleanness is uh, false accusations. Um... You name it. That's the reason that the Lord is going to do this. Because in a way, people are idolizing those things. And we shouldn't. Even the Lord says that he will make prophets and every unclean spirit to depart from the land. And if anyone is found prophesying, that person shall be cut off away. His mother and father of this so-called prophet shall push them away. Every prophet will be ashamed also for any vision that they claim to have when prophesying. And they even will not wear a robe of coarse hair to deceive. Because that's the reason. Because giving false information, a false prophecy, that's also deceiving other people into something that is not even real. So that's why you have to be careful. We have to be careful at what we're listening and to what we're giving our ears nowadays. Even, even more on the remote day when the Lord is doing all his work. Because let me tell you right now. Yes, the enemy is doing his work. He's performing like 24 7 without stop but the lord also is doing his work too and the lord is gonna bring destruction confusion among all those fighters it will be very obvious and evident that the lord will make a grand cleanse globally by removing and destroying anything and everything that's found in the way of the people. People that, for them to see and to walk with the Lord. Isn't it that the Lord is awesome? He's doing it for your best interest. Because your best interest is to be with Him. To remain with Him. To abide under Him. Do you want to be protected? Do you want to find refuge? Believe me, nowadays, we have no way, no place where we can find a, a good refuge. There's none. Because if you sit to the east of the, uh, America, there's earthquake, there's a uh, tornado, there's hurricane. Same thing to the west. And what's going, what's going on in the south? Now, what's going on on the north? A storm. A snowstorm. And freezing everywhere. You see what I'm saying? There's no way to escape to any safe zone. But, I have good news. There's one place that you can find refuge. Be protected. And have the peace that you will not find by being on the wall and that is 
under God. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus did his sacrifice for you and I to receive peace and a refuge. A stable refuge. A stable, uh, uh, not only covenant, but coverage. To be covered with the Lord. Because even his shadow will be protecting you. His mighty power will be protecting you. And anything that comes from heaven, it doesn't matter if everything is going like in pieces, still the Lord will be protecting you. So it's safe to say that it's not worthy to be having idols, any image just because, because of tradition, because of religion. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Religion gives nothing good, not even tradition. Okay? Follow what Jesus taught us. Do what Jesus said and taught us. Because even though Jesus also gave us the word, Jesus also taught us what to do for others. He cleans the apostles' feet. He even ate the bread and drink the one with the apostles, his disciples. Out of many things, right? So these are the things that we're supposed to be doing too. Now, besides that, we are told that we are supposed to be helping the fatherless, the widow, even people that are in, in distress. Now, if we are claiming to be children of God, we're supposed to be living under with the power the Lord has gave us to help those people that are oppressive by praying for them, casting out demons, okay? But the more important is stop sinning. Stop sinning mainly in the sense of doing sexual immorality. If you're living with somebody, already i mean um, um, this is not a word for condemnation either don't take it wrong this is a word of exhortation to start doing things better because the thing is when you start working on um, making things better doing the things that jesus taught us you are walking and working toward the holiness the sanctif sanctifications that we have received through Jesus. So if you keep justifying yourself about the things that you have done or doing, you are not allowing the Holy Spirit to bring to you that holy, that sanctification that the Lord has done for you. Even if the enemy tried to remind your past or somebody it doesn't matter who. Don't permit it because of that is bringing condemnation in your life too. Don't allow it. Don't allow it. With more reason, you have to be more in the Lord. And when God forgave you, He forgave you completely to leave your past in the past. And if the enemy is trying to bring it to the present, or somebody is using your past to attack you, just remember, you were forgiven already by Jesus through and God. So you cannot be, uh, how, how, what, how do you say the word? You cannot be accepting and receiving the lies that the enemy and through all those people that the enemy are, is using to condemn you. Don't do that. And the most important is, make things straight up in your life. Repent, and whatever you're idolizing, whatever idol you have in your life, remove it. Because it's going to be hardship if the Lord do it. And holiness is supposed to be 
something apart from our life. We must pursue it. We must pursue it constantly, daily. We must be in the place where we're supposed to be with the Lord to resist any temptation. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be resisting a sexual temptation because the Word of God is clear about that area. On um, that case, you're supposed to flee. Now, it's going to be hard if you're a person that you're living already with somebody that you're not married. Well, I guess you already know the answer and you have to make it clear and straight up with the Lord. Allow the Lord to speak to you through the Holy Spirit and show you any other areas that you have in your life that you have to improve to walk into the holiness where you're supposed to be. You've been justified already by Jesus. But don't just justify yourself by committing the same sin. People, the Lord loves us so much that He, even the Ten Commandments that He provides us in the Old Testament, He summarized them all into two. And those are the ones that Jesus spoke when he was among the men. So we're supposed to love God with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our mind, you know, our mind. And love more God, love more Jesus. That way, the love that you're receiving flow freely to love your neighbor. And that's the best way how you can operate to help other people too. Without seeing who it is, without seeing the situation, but helping each other. And most important, sharing the good news that the Lord gives us to speak to others. Always share what the Lord has done in your life with other people because that's how also the Lord will be glorified and honestly you may overcome already a certain areas in your life but somebody out there is going through the same and they don't know how to deal with it so that's why it's important to share what you have done to conquer and overcome on the areas where you went through share with those people now, the Lord even speak clearly here on the 14th chapter that, of course, the day is going to come. The day is going to come because there's going to be destruction, devastation, even uh, and other nations are going to be attacking Jerusalem and Judah's uh, city. The city will be taken over. The women will be raped. I mean, there's going to be a lot of devastation. A lot, a lot. It's gonna be dry. It's gonna be sad. Yes, the thing is, still the Lord give hope. We cannot lose the hope that the Lord is giving us. Also, after all of these things happen, the Lord will be fighting against those nations who fought against Jerusalem and Judah. And you know when God fight, he he gives a good fight, okay? He's gonna fight really huge. I mean, he's gonna be so strong the the to a capacity where even his feet, his body will be seen, and his spirit will be standing on the on the mount of the olive, you know, by the sea. And when this happened, the mount the mountain is gonna be bleeding in two when that happened automatically the seas are gonna start going like people thinking that is a tsunami but it's not a tsunami that's the lord presence here among all of us fighting for his people and the, the one part of the water that is divided is gonna go 
to the north and the other half is gonna go to the south okay the people that that will be around they it says in the word they shall flee through the god mountains valley that was created through through this uh division well the lord is coming with his saints to fight this battle he's not gonna be alone neither the saints are gonna be with him now when this happened let me explain you that we will have no moon no sun now because God's glory is so bright that will be enough for us to to have the light that we need day and night it doesn't matter because that's the reason that we have the moon the moon is to give light through the night still the god's glory is too bright and he's gonna be enough for us okay so on the same day like I explained, those waters that the mountains would be touching, one is going to be going to the east way and the other one to the western way. You know, it's like, okay, this is God standing on, the mountains has split, and this is that's what's going to happen. Okay? And through all of this, at the same time, in those areas, in both sections, summer and winter will be happening. I don't know, that sounds too familiar to me. Isn't it? Don't you think that uh, it's happening right now? It's like cold, but then hot. Hmm. Think about it. And throughout the whole earth, the Lord will be one, the one, the one king, the one king that we all need. He will be enough. We don't need no other king. We don't need no government. We don't need no presidents, neither prime minister, only him. Obelan will become as the plain due to the massive destruction that will receive with fire. Jerusalem will rise up again and the people will live in it again. After this, there will not be any more destruction, any total destruction. And, of course, the land, the people will be living in the land safely. Now, there's something that we have to do for the Lord. We have to go up to the temple. We have to participate in the Feast of the Tabernacle. What happens if you don't want to? Well, in this case, let's say in the case of Egypt, that is the most used, like, the more rebelled nation. Well, this is what happened. The Lord will send out a plague to those, to all of those who fight against Jerusalem. The plague consisted on their flesh, their skin will dissolve while they're standing on their feet, okay? Even their eyes will be dissolving in their socket, you know, right here. They're going to dissolve. And the tongue will be dissolving too in their mouth. So in other words, the person will be dissolving completely. That sounds like the person will be on the pit of hell. Because that's with fire. For, for, for this to happen, it's fire was coming on, on these people. On this person. And it's not going to be one. Anyone. Many. Many are going to receive in this plague. So, the Lord will allow for people to get in panic due to all of these events. You know, he will allow that, you know, the panic is going to be 
so, so, so bad that people will be fighting against each other with swords, with whatever, and even cutting their own hands, okay? They're taking the life of any other. So, even the people from Judah will be fighting also on Jerusalem. So, they're not alone. And the well, like gold, silver, anything that is valuable, the Lord will be taking it away from all of them. From, you know, I'm talking about the nations who attack Jerusalem. The nations who came to destroy Jerusalem and Judah. So you might think, but why the Lord is permitting this to happen, but then he, here he is defending it. Well, let's remember, Jerusalem is the chosen one. Okay? Thing is, we need to understand that there are consequences when we don't walk and follow God's will. Because the punishment is greater. And just remember that even though Satan attacked us, and the attack is heavy. He's not allowed to touch our soul, our spirit. So there's only one person who can touch our soul and, and our spirit. And that's God. That's God. Brothers and sisters. It's not worthy. It is not worthy to lose our soul on a place where there's a lot of torture. Torture with fire. Torture with the fear that demons and the enemy wants to project to us. It's not worthy. It's not worthy that you lose your life, your, mainly your soul, because like I say, only God can touch our soul, our spirit, not Satan. Yeah, Satan can do whatever to scare us, to wealth case, and try to use our thoughts to bring condemnation and all that stuff, but he cannot touch our soul. It's only if you open a door to him and then you are allowing the enemy to enter in your in your life. But at the end of the day, it's not worthy because there's a life eternally. And eternally is either and it is your choice. You will be living in heavenly places. Or in a torture place. At the end of the day, we're here temporary. This life is not guaranteed for anyone, for no one. And now with what's going on around nowadays, we cannot rely on mankind and nobody that we're going to be saved. Because we have to rely only on the Lord. And we're going to make sure that we are abiding on the principles that God has taught us, has been teaching us, and keep teaching us. For that reason, we have to stay in the Word, keep reading the Word, keep studying the Word, but also keep having a, be a beautiful and close relationship with the Lord. And if you don't know the Lord, just I just want to ask you to acknowledge God in your life. Accept Him in your life. To be in part in your life, but also for you to be part with the Lord. Be a partaker of the Lord. Participate on the things that the Lord wants us to do. Practice 
the words that the Lord gives us in the Holy Word. Do what Jesus has told us what to do. Live. Live for Him. Live for God. Live for Jesus. Live for the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit live in you. And I tell you that you're not going to lose nothing.